come out today to photograph some button grass plains. It's often been described that it's boring, it's drab, it's hard to walk through, it's good for snakes, but I find it absolutely beautiful and I know quite a few people who love button grass. Button grass itself is just these tussocks of native grasses, but with these amazing little flowers. But a button grass plain is made up of more than just button grass. In the wet, it's full of leeches, and in the heat, like today, it's every chance I could see a tiger snake. I'm hoping as I come over this rise that there'll be an extended button grass plain to lead up to the mountain. So I'm just trying to find a really good vantage point. The, uh, the top of the rise there I think would be really great. But I'm going to head up the hill just a little bit. In the meantime, like, I'm not ready for this. I might pull off a shot of that in a little while, but I have come out here particularly for this shot I'm after over here. You can see there's the dead trees on either side of the little bit of button grass there. I think if I can get that leading up to the main mountain on the left, So one of the first things I want to do, and this is what I do in every situation, is get a wide shot. I want to get the biggest, most expansive shot that I can, and then I drill into uh, some more interesting aspects. And the reason I do this is because I don't want to miss anything. And I've done it before where I've got an amazing shot coming up, and I go straight into the small stuff, and then the weather changes and I'll lose everything. And I never end up with a shot that I'm after. So this time, I'm going wide as. So in this case, I'm going 15 to 30 millimeters. I'm not sure just how wide I want to go just yet, but what I do want is more button grass and mountain. So what I've got here is uh, my first composition which is just basically a, a vertical composition with the rolling hill. So I've got the first sort of little uh, curvature here, and then beyond that, there's another curvature of a hill, and then there's the trees that go straight up to the mountain. There's a little bit of the sky, I don't want too much. The focus is on the grass, but I do want the mountain there to give the grass some scale which is kind of the opposite to what you would normally think. But I want to give the button grass plains the pride of place, but in a place. And I want the mid-ground in focus. There we go. That's not a bad shot, but what I might do is just move it around a little bit, get the third mountain in. I'll probably remove this bottom bit, so I'll probably get rid of this down here, make it a five by four. I think it's probably just a little bit scrappy down the bottom, but what I do want is this right across here. That's good. So what I'll do now, I'll go wide. It's really just the same composition as before, but wide. Uh, what I can do is bring that up a little bit more. So the, the mountain is in the top third, a bit of sky. And go really wide, maybe, no. And you can see I've got this entire range, all the way to this little knoll. The mountains in the top third, as you can see by the line, and got all the, um, the button grass taking up the full field below. So, ISO 100, F16, 130 to the second, done. Okay, for this shot, I'm going 
full blown, 150 to 450. I really want to see some detail. Got the polarizer on as well, so that should dim the, uh, the sky down. See how far down we can go. That might be a bit too much, probably. So we're going to mount the lens first. Get on the tripod. So from here you can see my composition. I'm really just shooting through the button grass. I don't know how effective it is. To be honest, 150mm is just a little bit too narrow. Uh, but the only other lens I've got is 24-70. So this will do the trick. I may even need to pull it up a little bit. Uh, but we'll have a look. There's a bit of a white twig in the way, so I might just have to shift my perspective a little bit. Lift up. Currently doing F9, which I think is enough. I don't want everything in focus. I just want to be able to blur through and then see the mountain and the, the field across. The F9, again, ISO 100, that brings about 1 40th of a second, and the dynamic range is like well within the parameters. Okay, here's the shot. I just want to pull out some really nice spots. I think over here where this small mountain is, uh, there's a, a few trees there that um, sort of work in so the mountain comes up between. Again, keeping that button grass. I always find that you get that first shot that you think is going to be great and then when you start looking around, the next shot is better. And the one after that is even better. Doing that one handheld, I think it's a, a really great composition, but I was a little bit unsteady. I mean, I've got shake reduction, but it doesn't cut it when you're at 450 mil. I really like this. Uh, we've got the mountains smack bang in the middle. You've got a small copse of trees to the right. And you've got button grass coming up over the top of those trees. So I'll get that to a good aperture where I can actually see button grass. Not get them in focus, but define them. And you can still see everything else in detail. So even though the, this mountain isn't too far away, there is quite a bit of heat haze. And I think maybe a longer exposure might help that. And that has given me visible button grass above the trees, but they're not in focus, which I do not want. But it gives that sense of distance and sense of scale. Polarizer really helps bring that bright blue down to a darker, more manageable level. Anyway, here's the picture. I think I've got a couple of good shots. I know you've already seen them, so you'll know before I do. I just want to come over this rise and take a photo of this other mountain range. It's this incredible looking mountain. It's like a dome that's just been chopped in half. It's made of quartzite, so it stands out really brightly, no matter what time of year it is. Frenchman's cap, let's check it out. It's just incredible. This is definitely a tripod moment. You'll see here, it's wavering considerably when you get up close. significant heat haze and you know that's probably good 12 to 20 k's away but that is a magnificent mountain so that's my composition there if you can see that smack bang in the middle of the top third sky around you got the trees below this even this slight breeze 
I actually need to go on a, a higher speed. So I'm going to flick over to manual, get on to one two hundredth of a second. Maybe drop the ISO, uh, drop the f stop down to six point three. It's not really going to matter. And ISO punch up to two hundred. field, I found one button grass flower, it's right beside the car, it's right here. So what I'm going to do is just try and get one in macro. There's so many people around here, a little uncomfortable, but this is the only flower. Sometimes you got to cheat. There we go, I think that's it. That's it. Got the shot, see, you gotta cheat. So here's something a little interesting. Something down low. You can see down here, there's a rock with some really lovely pink flowers. If I can get right down level, give these flowers some height from down below. I have my macro lens on. It is a 100 millimeter macro though. So I do still, if I want to get it all in, I still have to sit back a fair bit. So what I'm trying to do is get just the mound and can't really get the button grass in as well. Uh, so I get a bit of the mound with a bit of the, the white quartzite and I've got some blue sky in behind. I really like that. But I'll tell you what else I like. <laughs> it's hard to see from where you are, of course, but looking up here, there's just all of this button grass. And I've got the mountain in the background, it's pink in the foreground. A few of those button grass stalks in focus, some of them in the foreground, which are just hugely out of focus. But they give structure to the sky, they actually follow the clouds along. Oh, wow. I'm in love with that, absolutely in love. This little star flower just nestled in amongst all the grasses. It's in perfect shape. Looking top down on a flower, I love getting the stalk coming down and shooting off to the side. So it does give it some height, but it disappears into this beautiful bokeh. Well, here's that shot as well. I think that's it for today. We've got the button grass planes. Uh, we've got the button grass close up. We've actually found one flowering button grass flower. With that, if you like it, please hit like. If you really like it and you want to see more, hit subscribe. I'll be back again with another one very soon.